We got a lot of things going on. Let's go about 50 seconds, 20 seconds on this video. We won't leave it at all. Sure. Okay. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Thank you for listening and tuning in to It's Okay to Be Different. Today we're going to be talking about our program, how it began, and the services we provide. But before we get started, I'm going to start off with my little poem. I always start off at the beginning of each show. So this poem is titled, Just Because I'm Different. Just because I'm different doesn't mean I'm anything less than what you are. I'm still a human with feelings. I just thought you let I, I just thought I'll let you know. You think because I dress the way that I do means I'm lowering myself to your ridicule. But that's just the reason that I act like me. I am my own person. It's called originality. So don't label me like I'm just a worthless can of soup. It's not my fault you don't see me see the world like I do. If you actually took the time to put down your preppy nose. You might see I'm not just a tulip among a bunch of roses. I'm sorry that you're ignorant and never will be able to see the truly awesome person that I will turn out to be. So call me everything you want. Hate me throughout the year. Blame me for all your problems. I really don't care. Now today we're going to be talking about our program, how it began, and the services that we provide. I'm going to start with a little bit about myself. I'm originally from California. I moved here to Las Vegas in 1999. Um, I was a single parent of five boys. Um, I've been in the medical field since 93. I actually switched over to law enforcement back in 2005. Now, the reason why I switched over to the law side is because I always wanted to start a youth program but I wanted to see how it ran on the inside. So saying that I had the opportunity to fill out for a correctional officer position and I was offered the position. So in November 2005, I began working in the women's prison. I worked there for about six months. Um, didn't care for working in the women's prison. But then I transferred over to the uh, juvenile side, which was opened up in Jean. So myself amongst 11 other officers went out there to reopen that program out there. In 2008, um, we then closed down SNCC. Then we moved up to High Desert, and a lot of officers went dispersed out to the other institutions throughout the Nevada state. Um, I really enjoy working in the correctional facility, um, in, in the corrections um, setting. It really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And the reason why I went on to wanting to open up the youth program is because dealing with a lot of young people inside the prison system, you get to know a lot about, about them. You get to learn a lot about, about their history, um, what they've been through, um, how they grew up, and why they're there now. I always had a chance to talk to young men um, when I worked in the high desert. Um, I knew two young men because of uh, knowing their mother. I worked with their mother at the hospital, at one of the local hospitals here. So I had the opportunity to meet the young men before going to side the prison. I will pull, uh, whenever I had the opportunity, I would pull a, a youth over and start speaking to them and start talking to them about, you know, what happened? Why are you here? And then they began to tell me their story. So long story short, I also was on the opposite side as a parent. I had a son who was very outgoing, who didn't want to follow the rules, who wanted to do what he wanted to do, when he wanted to do it, and how he wanted to do it. So he started indulging in some crime that I didn't like, um, hanging around the wrong people, which I didn't like. So I was looking and searching for services that would be able to help me, to help my son stay out of the system. I thought by being a correctional officer here in the state of Nevada that I would be able to, it would be much easier for me because being on that side, but I was wrong. 
I went down to the court system, juvenile court systems. I knocked on many doors. I called many numbers. But every time that I reached out to someone, I was always told there was no services for the youth. Um, they only will receive services once they become in the system. And I thought as a parent, why should I have to wait for my child to become to be in the system before services can be rendered to my child? So there wasn't any programs that I knew of or that anybody really spoke about um, when I was looking for help or assistance for myself as a mother and as for my son. And in beginning to do research and talking to people, the neighbors, I spoke to a lady that lived across the street who was actually going through the similar situation I was going through, but unfortunately her son was already in the system. But she said the exact same thing that I had said. When she was looking for help, there was no help. They were always told her that they didn't have any assistance for people before getting to prison the system. They had to be in the system in order to receive assistance. So I'm gonna let my partner talk a little bit about himself, um, his background, and then we'll go from there. Go ahead, Alan. Good morning, my name is Alan Burst, um, native of Nevada, born and raised here in Las Vegas. Graduated from uh, Western High School got uh became interested in, in law enforcement early in life um, got the opportunity to become a police officer here in southern nevada with several agencies um and uh during that law enforcement span i, I dealt with a lot of youth and and found that they were having issues that uh as a police officer you could only help so much so uh I then wanted to give more to the youth, but there was very, very little, very few avenues to travel with that. Um, so at, at the end of that, I, uh, I met my wife and uh, she had this grand idea and we put it together and here we are. Um, and uh, our company is called It's Okay to Be Different and the name says it all. Okay, okay. Um, our mission and what we're striving to do is to break the cycle of incarceration. Um, we we try to build character, empower, to mentor, encourage, to inspire, motivate, reduce recurring incarceration amongst our youth. 70% of our children that has a loved one that are, that's in the system has a chance of ending up there themselves if they don't receive the proper and effective intervention or a positive role model in their life. In our program, we're reaching out to schools, to churches, to the community, community centers, in hopes that they will allow us to spread the word, allow us to speak and talk and help break the cycle of incarceration. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. In our mission, we want to help one child at a time. We have a correspondence program, which entails, if we have a youth in our program that has a loved one that's in, in the system, that we will sit down with the child and help them to write a letter to their loved one um, we do believe that it is very important that the child has both parents in their lives. Um, and by doing so, even if the absent parent is in the system, we still want them to be an active person in their life. <clears throat> Excuse me. They can only do so much, but keeping them in tune with their child as far as letting them know how they're doing in school, um, letting them know what they're doing on the outside as far as social activities, what have you, um, we still want them to be involved in some kind of way. So we're, <clears throat> excuse me, so we're sitting down with the youth and we're writing, help them to write the letters to their loved ones to let them know that they still love them and to let them know that this is what they're doing on the outside. Uh, we also have another program, it's called Prom Me. And Prom Me is for our seniors that are getting ready to graduate and going to this, going into the adult world, um, 
And our program is we link them with a local tuxedo company here where they, they will give us a tux for a young man who cannot afford to buy the tux, but they want to go to prom. And then we have dresses and shoes that have been donated to the young lady so that they can also participate in prom. Now we all know prom is a very important part of our lives growing up. Everybody looks forward to prom. Everybody talking about what they're going to wear, what they're going to buy, the colors, the limos, the flowers, and what have you. And we know at that time it can be very expensive on the parents. And, and being some parents are single parents, and we know that it's hard and because they have to provide and, and provide a roof and, and, and build and food so they can be able to continue on with life. But we will also like to assist the parents in uh, uh, allowing their child to still participate in the prom, their prom, their senior prom. And we have e educational tutoring where if we have a child that is suffering in a subject in school, that we will sit down with the child, with the, tut with the tutor that will assist them in their subjects in school, whether it be math, English, what have you. We also have a mentoring program. We have a one-on-one -on -one between a mentor and mentee. And we link the mentor up with the mentee with the perfect match. Um, and every mentor goes through an, ex an extensive background. We want our children to be safe at all times. And what we expect from the mentor is a year commitment from them, but also 20, no more than 20 hours a month with their mentee. Doesn't mean that they still can't have contact where it's via phone, cell phone, uh, texting, computer, what have you, whatever kind of communication it is. And then we also have a 24 hour hotline if a child is going through something, whether it be peer pressure or bullying or just needs to talk to someone, that they can always call our number that we have. Our number is 702-380-0828 and someone will be there to assist them. We also are collaborating with the Mental Health Program, Behavioral Health Services, and it's called CSSI Health Services, which is located on 3013 North Rancho Suite 127. And they provide comprehensive psychological mental health assessments by licensed marriage and family therapists. There is a licensed clinical social worker and a registered intern to promote emotional well being. Some issues addressed may include grief, loss, personal trauma, anxiety, depression, parenting concerns. Another one of our programs we have, um, it's called a Mighty Young's program. And that we deal with between the ages of nine to 12. And this program focuses on not quite, they're not quite a teenager, but they're getting ready to start experiencing the hormone changes. Um, they may be experiencing peer pressure, or they may even be coming to, act, uh, starting to act out. And then we have our Mighty Lions uh, program and, and the ages is between 13 and 18 and this program is for youth already experiencing the juvenile system and our main focus is to in, in intercept and come up with a goal and plan to get them back on the right track to redirect and teach how to turn their negative behaviors into positive ones. We have peer-to-peer -peer meetings and in those classes we offer banking, how to fill out job application, mock interviews, uh, how to properly fill out a job application. Um, we're teaching them self-esteem classes, how to dress for success. We're teaching, even we have parenting classes, um, teaching the parents how to effectively communicate with their children. We have, um, sub, we now offer substance abuse classes. Um, and we have teens or parents that are experiencing this and they need some kind of Avenue. So we're there. We also have that program. Also, we have the motivational speaking where myself we go out to the community and I talk to the youth about incarceration, about the choices they make, how less than five minutes they can get into trouble, but it takes a lifetime to get out. And I speak 
to the youth ranges from fourth grade to 12th grade. So, and I know you've seen the, the program called Scare Straight. I bring the scare straight to you. I talk to you. No, I don't get up in your face, holler, scream, and whatnot. But I talk to you, and I let you know what can happen once you come over into the system. What can happen once you are in prison, behind those prison walls. And I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Alan talk about our event that we're, that's coming, our upcoming event that we are about to have at the end of this month. We have an event coming up, a community event called No More. It's No More Youth Event. Uh, the grand opening for the CSI Behavioral Health uh, is the re-grand opening anyway. Uh, and it's an event for the entire family. Um, the entire family can come out. We want you to invite all your friends, neighbors, relatives, everybody. Because it, it, like Tina said, it takes a community to raise a child. Um, we need to get back to that old thing where an adult can admonish a child without that child's uh, parent getting upset when that other adult is just trying to correct that child's uh, actions. You know, yeah, the event is August 29th, and we're going to go from 10 to 2. It's going to be at 921 West Owens in Nucleus Plaza. There's going to be food, raffles, music, speakers. We have some some outstanding speakers that's going to come out. You get you guys don't really don't want to miss that. Um, uh, at the beginning of of the event, we're going to release balloons to children that have committed suicide from bullying or anything that they've committed suicide from because you know children should should not be committing suicide from anything so we're going to release balloons as a tribute to them and again it's august 29th from 10 a.m to 2 p.m like i said there'll be food raffles music speakers um just come out and enjoy and 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 enjoy the community uh, because it, it takes a village to raise a child so that's that's our event and again you can reach us at 702-380-0828 and you can also check out our website okay the number two the letter b different dot net and we are for our event. We are looking for vendors. So if you're interested in coming out and sharing your right, product, right. please uh, don't hesitate to give us a call at 702-380-0828. And at this time, if you have any questions, you can give us a call at 702-983-0711. At this time, we'll be answering the call. So if you would like to call and talk to us live, go ahead and give us a call again, the number. 702-983-0711. And I'd also like to mention um, what our program is coming soon. Um, we're going to be starting to have a life coach. A life coach where she'll be discussing and, and talking to you about life. Um, if you have any questions. Um, so please stay tuned. Keep checking on our website to find out when she's actually starting to take uh, clients. And also, we are starting to, um, we're going to start having music therapy. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody knows music is good to the soul. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be having that. So please stay tuned. Watch our website for the upcoming date for that. Also, we're going to have horse therapy. And a lot of people don't know that horse is, is a form of therapy. Um, children that are going through certain situations in life and when they get around horses for some odd reason i don't know horses have that effect on people so that is also an upcoming thing and another thing i want to mention is we are starting a new chapter in california in my hometown and that's going to be oxnard so that is going to be opening up within the next two months i'm so excited with that um my mother is also going to be part of that Dr. Frida, Reverend Frida Wiggins. She's going to be uh, assisting on the net side of the chapter in California. So if you also would like to become a mentor, we need many, many, many mentors that are serious about it. 
please give us a call at 702-380-0828. Or you can go onto our website and fill out a questionnaire form and we'll return an, um, your call and even forward you an application at OK, the number two, the letter B, different.net. Do you have anything else to say? No, just uh, we would love your your participation in this uh, in the event. Absolutely. August 29th, 921 West Owens, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Food, raffles, speakers. The guest speakers that we have are phenomenal. You really won't uh, you really don't want to miss this. So again, if you have any questions, you can give us a call at 702-380-0828. And we'll answer any questions that you have. Um, Tina mentioned earlier that we we're in desperate need of, of mentors. Um, please, if you're interested in becoming a mentor and giving back to the community, um, give us a call. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's you know. Let's just be about it. Let's get these kids back on the right track, and 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 start saving some lives with these kids. Um, too many kids are committing suicide and going down the the path you know, of, of incarceration. We want to stop that. You know, we want to give them a better future, um, and, you know, teach them the things, teach them, teach them how to be young men and young women and be productive in, in, in society and, and, and make a, a decent, a decent life for themselves. So that is, it's okay to be different because it is okay to be different no matter how you wear your hair, the style of clothes you wear, how you speak, it's okay to be different. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's just so much going on with these young kids, you know, lately. It's, it's, and we really need to come together as a community and, and help these kids out um, and quit with the, the negative stuff and create some positive things for these kids to be doing. Um, it, it, it's it's crazy the amount of gunplay that, that's going on in the streets now. We have got to get a hold of our kids. And parents, you have just got to stop being afraid. You know, it, it's your house. You know, hey, go through their dressers, go through that's their right. clothes, room you know, room checks. Uh, I, 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 I never got a chance to flip a, flip a bunk. But it's my fun. partner did. She it's flipped fun. the bunk. And so, you know, I, I got to pat him down to search cars. So she got to flip bunks and stuff. But, you know, but uh, it's your house, you know, take take control of it, you know. And 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 one thing we we want you to do is 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 get in tune with your child. You know, just don't hear what they're saying. Listen, listen to what listen, they're saying. Listen. Because most of them will give you warning signs, just like a car or when it's about, or just like a car when it's about to break down. They give you a warning sign before they're about to act out. You know, and then a lot of times all they want is quality time from uh, whatever parents there. And the ones that are not there, you know, like we said, we have we have a program to correspond with that parent. You know, um, so if that parent is locked up and 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 you're mad about that? Okay, we're gonna let you express that, you know. Because you really don't know how that affects the child when the when the other child is not. I mean, when the other parents feel when the other parent is not there, then that child starts to feel unwanted, right? A uh, lack of self esteem. They start to uh, think, was it them that caused the other parent not to be there? What is it? So whatever it is. I encourage the other parent to allow the absent parent to be a part of them, only if the absent parent wants to be. Now, if he doesn't want to be or she doesn't want to be, don't force the issue, but talk to your child about it. Let your child know that, hey, you know, I, we're, I trying, try. we're, we're trying to, to get the other parent involved, but just don't not say it to the child because then the child's going to have to deal with this situation. Um, and Something else that I want to say. The reason why I'm doing this, are we doing this program is because we have 15 grandchildren. And two on the way. And two on the way. And I want the streets to be safe for my grandkids when they walk down the street. I don't want to have to worry about getting a phone call 
saying something happened because of another child who just doesn't take life seriously. Um, there was a situation that happened last weekend that really bothered me. And yes, I'm mad. I'm mad as a parent because you have these kids riding around in vehicles thinking this is funny, thinking this is funny games with these little weapons that they throwing out their car window, shooting at people. My son and his friend was shot at down in North Las Vegas off the Losey Road. And it's disturbing. And it's, and it's very upsetting to have to think about how careless people think or how careless people take take their lives. You know, our lives are not a game. It's not a video game. This is real. This is going on in amongst our community. Unless we don't step up and take a stance, who will? If we don't try to take back our kids in these streets, who will? So it starts at home and it does take a, a village to raise a child. So if we all get together to help raise these children in this community, it'd be okay. You know what I think? I think a lot of it is pride. A, a lot of the parents are too prideful to ask for help. You know, instead of uh, calling and saying, hey, my child is going through this. How do I, how can I get some help? Or can, you know, is there anybody, any help out there to, you know, assist me with this? Um, I mean, we cover just about everything. So all you have to do is call and, and we'll get you some type of help. But, right. you know, a lot of these parents are too prideful to say that they can't handle their children. Yeah. And not so much as that. I, from interacting with other parents from the children that we have dealt with, I've noticed that some parents are afraid. That's They're afraid crazy. of their kids. That's crazy. And bottom line is, you're a parent and they're a child. So it's time that you take back your home and stop letting and allowing your child to run in your home because at the end of the day if something's going to happen you're going to be the only one there for that child and children if you truly truly love your parent like you say you do then you'll stop and think about what you're doing because what your actions doesn't only affect you but it affects your family it's like a domino effect you're the front part of the domino, the domino line. So if you tilt over, guess what? You're going to hit the next domino. And that domino is going to hit the next domino. And so forth and so on and so on. So therefore, if you love your parents, stop and think about your actions. Stop and think about what you're doing because you're hurting your parents. You're hurting your mother. You're hurting your father. Stop it. Enough is enough. I'm so tired of these kids. Taking this as a game. I am so tired. Sick Life has tired, no value. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Life has no value to these kids. I mean, they're they're like she said, they're riding around with these guns and they're shooting. And nine times out of ten, they miss their mark that they're shooting at and, and, and hit somebody that has nothing to do with with uh, their their current situation. And what they don't realize is that's transferred intent. It doesn't matter if you intended to kill them. You're still going to get the same charge. And then probably a worse one because you, 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 you killed an innocent person. So let's find a way to reach these kids, you know, get these guns off the street, parents, tear the room apart, find the guns, call a local police department, turn those guns in. If you don't want to call a local police department, call our number, we'll come, take the gun, and we'll turn it into the authorities. So what I'm saying is you have to take back your house. You have to. I mean, the narcotics, whatever you find, turn it into the local police department. You know, you have to, you have to take a stand for something. Too much of our young people's blood is being shed. And as parents, we should not be bearing our children. It should be the other way around. Like I was saying last week, and my son and his friend went to a memorial down in North Las Vegas where another young man was shot in the neck. They said blood was still on, on the sidewalk. Our children's blood is being shed, shed for nonsense. So it's time as a community, we need to stand up, St stand up, fight for something. If you're going to fight for something, fight for this, fight for our kids, fight for our youth, because our youth are, our youth is our future. You know, again, if you have any 
any business that you want you want to be part of our event give us a call we'll love for you to be a vendor you, you set up your booth you can discuss whatever you need um, whatever your business is we don't we're not going to discriminate against any of that I mean whatever it is it, it could be a food vendor we 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 will open arms jury, jury whatever whatever it is we need you to be part of this community because because be part of this event because you're part of the community you know it takes an entire village to raise a child if we can save one child from death or destruction this whole thing that we're doing will be well worth it you know but we want to save many kids and, and and it's many kids out there that that are definitely in need of mentors and just positive people in their lives I mean, we, we have to bridge that gap between police and the community now because of all this craziness that's going throughout the country. You know, people are afraid of the police. And when I grew up, we were always told that the police were your friends. Friends, right? You know, right. and, and now, now, you can't. now, you know, these people would rather shoot it out with you, you know, than get a citation. And 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 we need to we need to change that perception perception of police officers you know we need to get back to the the community or policing where they're walking the streets and you know and shaking hands and doing a political thing kissing babies or whatever we need to do we need to bridge that gap so we can make our streets much safer. much safer for our kids our our future and which is our grandkids our, our children you know because they are our future and and if we don't get a hold of this madness that's going on between you know the police and, and and certain communities we are in for a world of hurt and i want every one of my grandkids to grow old you know i don't want them i don't want to have to bury them to to some type of violence from from law enforcement or and or the street so let's come together as a community and and let's make this event successful you know, give us a call, 702-380-0828. I mean, that's that's our line, and it's, it's open 24 hours. Somebody will answer. If we don't, I promise you we'll get back to you within a matter of minutes, you know, after receiving a call. So just give us a call. If you want to be a part of the event, you want to be a mentor, you have an issue with your, your kids, you you – you know, find something in your kid's room and you don't want to be the one to turn it over to the police, give us a call. We'll we'll come handle that. We'll take care of that. And like I said, vendors, you are encouraged to call us um, for a table. It's $50. If you book before the 15th, we'll give it to you half off. So if you would like to come out and share your products, whether it's clothing, whether it's food, whether it's jewelry, Whatever, if you paint faces, if you do drawings, paint, give us a call. We want this to be a big community event that you'll be talking about for years to come. So we encourage vendors to come out, even if you have another mentoring program. If you are, if you have a mentoring program, if you have a behavioral health pro, uh, services, you are also encouraged to come out. We would like to have everybody to come out. It's not about my program, our program, or it's not about your program. It's not about it's competition. About community. So this is this. We're all in this together to make it for one purpose. This for our kids. So I invite every mentor program out there. I invite every behavior services program out there. Come out and share your your service. Come out and talk with everybody else. Like I said, it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about the community. It's about our kids. So come out and bring your, your information out and share it. So if you're interested in having a table and a booth, go ahead and give us a call. We'll set that up for you. And if you book your booth before the 15th of August, you'll get a half off discount. So please, please, please come on out and enjoy this festivities with us. Have fun. Come out and eat food, come out and dance, laugh, talk. It's about having fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. Please just come out and, and, and let's let's make this successful. It's for the kids. It's for our children. It's not about 
it's not for it's okay to be different. It's it's not about you know any other programs. It's about the children. It's about the community. So let's co get out and let's make this this event successful. You know, we 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 got so many you know good kids out there, but you know they they're turning to you know the streets for for guidance. And the street are gonna is, is gonna guide them the wrong way. So let's let's corral them, get them back on the right track. Let's get more graduates. Let's get more college students. Let's get more lawyers, more doctors, more police officers. You know, if, if you can become a police officer in a community that you grew up in, you will take so much pride in that. That it it it, it, it would, you know, because you won't go in there with the attitude of I don't care. So let's let's get these kids. Let's 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 turn them around. Let's let's mold them. You know, we we might have the next president of the United States on our hands. Stand so right here. so let's 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 get these kids, corral them, get them on the right road, and 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 let's make let's make some positive positive changes in in their lives and in the community. And again, it's okay to be different. Yes, it is. Thank you for tuning in. Two. It's okay to it's be okay different. It's okay to be different. Yeah. You're not knowing. You better, you better ask somebody. <laughs> give, me, give me kisses. Give me my kisses. Hey, we different. Tell me different. Come on. We different. We different. Yes, we different. We different. We different. We different. Yes, we different. I'm Tina rocking on the mic. I'm Tina rocking on the mic. This is Dio rocking on the mic. This is Leo rocking on the mic. We're different. Yes, we're different. We're different. Yes, we're different. We're different. Yes, we're different. You yes, don't know, but I have somebody. It's okay to be different. That's our model, and that's what we're trying to teach our youth. It's okay to be different. Thank you. 